excited about today because we have uh, the need to recognize the women, especially living in Georgia, living in Georgia or from Georgia. And um, I will say that there are a lot of women here from Albany, and I'm proud to say that I did work in Albany, Georgia, the summer of 1962. Um, the book, Hands on the Freedom Plow, has 52 accounts of women in SNCC. And so you can get the book from Amazon.com or from the Georgia State University bookstore. It's really exciting, and I'm just excited when I read about it, read all the different stories. The mini exhibit outside are photographs that I took over the years of, from reunions from 94 to, to last year, and they reflect the women in Georgia, but that, that exhibit is part of a larger exhibit that has photographs, portraits of uh, the majority of the women who are contributors to the book. Now, uh, important an important uh, part of that book is the words. And so at Georgia State, where I'm the director of African American Student Services and Programs, in January, February, and March, we have been highlighting the book and the women who participated in the Civil Rights Movement as a part of SNCC and contributors to the book. So today, uh, my, uh, our theater production company at Georgia State will perform some excerpts, dramatic readings, very short, uh, from the book, just so you get a flavor of what is in the book. Okay, we'd like to get started. Um, Monique Allen, Grace Jordan, Corey Webb Turner, and Brittany Henderson. I'm the same right. man. I'm the same man. <laughs> <laughs> you start hearing the... <laughs> we got to start the council meeting right at 1 o'clock. Well, so, we've rehearsed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, quick. next one. Okay, please. A Snick Blue Book by Jane Von Moore. My intellectual and spiritual background led me inevitably to know that change must happen. Now, whether I believed at the time that segregation would end and black people would get the vote, I can't say. I did and do believe that the universe is pushing us forward. I did not take part in any historical events except my life. I did not sit in or protest. When I rode the bus in Atlanta, I always sat in the front. I am sure that my light stand kept me out of confrontations. My darkest hours occurred when fear overcame me. I felt it a lot after my children were born. What kept me going was that life went on. You can't stop curl into a fetal position and whimper. You have to keep on. Change the diapers, read to the baby, take her for a walk. All those things have to be done. The best moments were when I felt part of a group in mass meetings in Albany and Birmingham with the crowds, choirs, and organists. Often, after hard and unrewarding labor, black people of all classes came together at mass meetings to be part of that group, working toward our freedom. All right, Since I laid my burden down, Bernice Johnson, freedom. That's my jail song. I had known it and sung it long before being arrested in the wave of demonstrations in Albany, Georgia, December 1961. It was a favorite song of my mother, Beatrice Johnson. There were no auditions. Everybody could sing. One only needed the desire within to be a part of the birthing of or raising of a song and the courage to do so. This song, since I laid my burden down, describes one of many things I discovered about being locked up in jail. The idea of being in jail and that being exactly where I needed to be was the antithesis of what had been taught to us by our parents and teachers. Staying out of trouble certainly also included staying out of jail. Who knew that being free of a heavy burden could actually be experienced even if the police had taken charge of your body and locked you behind bars, 
I could express this because there were songs that gave us a way of saying what we were doing in Albany, Georgia. In 1961, as we began to build a movement, the Albany movement conquered my fear of going to jail. And the songs helped me to do this. The voice I now have, I got that first time I sang in a mass meeting after I got out of jail. I never heard that voice before, but I've never been that me before. I have never let that me go, not in my singing, nor in the life I have tried to live since that time. All right. Carolyn Daniels, Dawson, Georgia, 1963. We just kept going. One Saturday night, after all volunteers and my son, Roy, had gone back to school, I heard footsteps and car doors <clears throat> slamming. Just as I started to peep out the window, the, sh the shooting began. As I rolled over onto the floor and got under the bed, all the windows were shot out. Then a bomb was thrown in and rolled right under the bed with me. All I could, all I could think was, oh Lord, what is Roy going to do without me? But somehow, the bomb didn't go off. Finally, the shooting stopped. I crawled out from under the bed and saw that blood was pouring from my foot. I ran outside to the neighbors and she took me to the hospital. When I came back, my house was gone. Mm. The bomb had gone off after I left. Wow. But we kept going, kept in the streets, kept taking people to register, kept getting people to vote. We just kept going. Hey. All right. Sometimes in the ground troops, sometimes in the leadership by Dr.